During an early fall trip to Boston to visit family, we took an in-depth walking tour of Boston. And of course, our favorite part was a famous cemetery which is the burial site of several Revolutionary War patriots, just to name a few. Granary Burial Grounds was established in 1660. Think about that for a minute. That is 116 years before the American colonies declared their independence in 1776. The Granary Burying Grounds contains approximately 2,000 345 gravestones and tombs, but it is estimated to have over 6,000 people buried at the site. One of my favorite things about this cemetery are the gravestones. They are mostly made of slate with a customary imagery of the times. One of the most popular motifs was the sole effigy which depicts a skull or death's head. The head usually had wings that represents the soul flying to the heavens after death. Elaborate artistry, poetic inscriptions, and representations of the Grim Reaper and Father Time also adorn many headstones. But nothing beats the patriots that are buried here. There are three signers of the Declaration of Independence. Signers like Samuel Adams, John Hancock, and Robert Treat Payne. Along with the patriot and craftsman Paul Revere. Even five victims of the Boston Massacre are buried here. And near the center of the cemetery is a 25-foot-tall obelisk that commemorates the tomb of Ben Franklin's parents and family. Even Mother Goose is buried here. Wow, what a cemetery. Let's show you just some of the names most people will be familiar with. Ben Franklin's father, mother, stepmother, and several siblings and their spouses are buried around the obelisk right in the middle of the cemetery. Ben Franklin's Boston roots run deep. He was one of 17 children and was born just around the corner on Milk Street in 1706. The original building where he was born burnt down in a major fire back in 1811. Oh no, the red coats are coming, the red coats are coming. <laughs> This founding father was born in Boston in 1735. He died here in 1818 at the age of 83. He is most known for his famous ride warning the colonists that the British were coming. That story was dramatized in Longfellow's famous poem, Paul Revere's Ride. Although Paul did ride that night to warn the countryside. It really didn't follow the true story of that night, but it was always fun to think that it was. He was a Revolutionary War patriot and silversmith by profession. He took up dentistry to help support his family, and in 1765, he joined the famous Sons of Liberty. We also visited his home that still stands just down the street. Music 
Yes, when you think of Sam Adams, we think of beer. Not only is a modern beer named for him, but he and his family were in the brewing business, more on the malting side of things. But Sam was so much more than that. Samuel Adams is not only one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, but also considered one of the founders of the Sons of Liberty. In other words, one of the people who started the independence movement with many others. At one time, he was the Massachusetts governor. He was born in Boston in 1722 and died in Boston in 1803 at the age of 81. Sam's parents and siblings are also buried here. One of the most famous signers of the Declaration of Independence is John Hancock, basically because he put his enormous John Hancock on the document. His signature is huge compared to everyone else's. Like his cemetery neighbors, Paul Revere and Sam Adams, he was also one of the founders of the Sons of Liberty. He also served as governor of Massachusetts twice. Around 1898, the tall memorial replaced Hancock's original gravestone. The symbol at the top of the monument is the Hancock family crest. The memorial also bears the family name and a portrait of young John Hancock. It also includes a Latin phrase that means resist the beginnings. His monument has several other Hancock graves around it. His wife, Dorothy Quincy Hancock Scott, brother Ebenezer, and his wife, and their offspring. According to this article that was written around 1898, states that the tomb was open when the new memorial was built and a zinc coffin was found. A copper plate on the coffin indicated that not only was John Hancock in the coffin, but his son, John George Washington Hancock, was beside him in the coffin. Johnny, his nine-year-old son, died about six years before John Hancock. It is said that Johnny was mortally wounded in the head when he fell on the ice while skating on a pond in Milton, Massachusetts. John Hancock died in 1793 at the age of 57. Massachusetts-born Elizabeth Goose is the woman who is said to be the original Mother Goose. But this has never been proven. Elizabeth was married to widower Isaac Goose in 1682. They had six children. Elizabeth was also the stepmother to Isaac's 10 children from his first wife, Mary. With 16 kids, wouldn't that make her the old woman who lived in a shoe? She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. Reportedly, it was her son-in-law, Thomas Fleet, a printer, who assembled her collection of songs and stories into a book called Songs of the Nursery. Unfortunately, no copy of the publication is known to have survived, so it is hard to prove this really happened. Thomas Fleet, her daughter, who is also named Elizabeth, and grandson, Captain William Fleet, are also buried in the cemetery. Her grandson, William, is thought to be the one that started the story of the existence of the book, Songs of the Nursery. But again, this is all hearsay. Elizabeth died in 1758 between the ages of 92 and 93. A headstone with the name Mary Goose seems to get mixed up with Elizabeth. 
but Mary was Isaac's first wife and died in 1690. Elizabeth and Isaac married three years later. There is also a headstone for Susanna Goose, who was Mary's 15-month-old, who died in 1687. I could not find where Isaac is buried, but I am sure he is in the same cemetery somewhere. Five victims of the Boston Massacre are buried here. The massacre occurred March 5, 1770. A crowd of colonists gathered and began taunting a small group of British soldiers. Tensions mounted rapidly, and when one of the soldiers was struck, the others fired their muskets, killing three of the Americans instantly and mortally wounding two others. Crispus Atticus was the first to fall, thus becoming one of the first men to lose their life in the cause of the American independence. All five victims were buried in a common grave. There is no doubt that this cemetery is amazing. There are many more famous figures in the burial grounds but we covered the ones that the common American would recognize the name. If you ever decide to come to Boston, make sure to carve out plenty of time to visit its cemeteries.